I got another message today that I'm excited. We're going to the book of Exodus. The word Exodus means to escape or it means exile. And it's where God sets his people free from slavery. That's why prophetically I had to grab somebody and pull them and tell them you're coming out of this because God is about to cause a mass exodus to happen in their life. They're about to go from one place to another in Jesus' name. I want to read for you some verses. I really want you to catch them in your spirit. Exodus 31 Verse 1. If you could stand with me for the reading of God's word and then you'll be seated for the next 24 minutes and I'll be up here and I am going to hit that clock. Are you excited about that? Y'all just hungry. You need to eat before you come to church. That ain't my problem. <laughs> Exodus 31. Verse 1. You ready? Let's do it together. Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur. Of the tribe of Judah. Filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, with all kinds of skills, to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of crafts. Moreover, I have appointed Aholiab, son of Ahisamech, these are some names for y'all, of the tribe of Dan. To help him. Also, I have given him the ability to all the skilled workers. I've given the ability to all the skilled workers to make everything I have commanded you. The tent of meeting, the Ark of Covenant law with the atonement cover on it, and all the other furnishings of the tent. The table and its articles, the pure gold lampstand, and all the accessories, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering, and all its utensils. The basin with the stand, and also the woven garment. I like this. Both the sacred garments for Aaron the priest and the garments for his sons when they serve as priests. And the anointing oil, fragrance, incense for the holy place. They are all to make them just as I commanded you. They are all to create them just as I have commanded you. I want to preach a message over the next few moments, if you'll bear with me, called the creative genius. Lord Jesus, breathe on your word. We're here for you. Thank you for speaking to us. We need you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Y'all ready? If you're excited for the word of God, give him a praise. Hey, we're all into creativity. All of us, we're into creativity. It's all around us. It's a part of culture. It's a major part of culture. But often when we think of creativity, we think of uh, things that are popular, right? We think of, we think of performers like, like Ursher. That's what we call them in Georgia. How many of y'all watch the Super Bowl performance? Come on, don't fake it. Hey, who had a better Super Bowl performance, Usher Raymond or Michael Jackson? All the people who think Usher waved at me, all the Usher people. There's a few faithful people. Y'all know what's up. Mike was that guy. Um, we, think, we think of luxury brands, or we think of brands, we think of Nike versus Louis, right? When we think of creativity. We think, of, we think of athletes and their ability to create in the moment. People like, I don't know who's better, LeBron or Mike? Michael Jordan. Which one? Which one? How many? Jordan went six for six. You may think, when you think creativity, you may think of technology. All the Android people make some noise. I found that Android people also have this uh, uh, spirit of rebellion. You like being the only one with green. <laughs> and mess up the whole text thread. Creativity is all around us. Creative expressions in branding and music and fashion and in sports is all around us. And, and the truth is you're way more creative than you think you are. Because when we think of creativity, we think, man, if I can't do music videos, or if I can't do graphics, or if I can't produce music, then I may not be creative. Ladies and gentlemen, it takes a bunch of creativity to raise a child and go to work. Come on, holler at me. It takes creativity to be a manager at Macy's doing Black Friday. 
It's like creativity in, in, in your average and everyday life. And the reality is that we're made in a likeness of an image of God. And because he is a great creator, he's on the inside of us, meaning that we have the ability to create our own words. But I didn't come here today to self-motivate you, to get you excited about your ability to create. Absolute, actually, I came to build your faith, to remind you of the God you serve. And this is what I love about Exodus 31. And I chose this scripture on purpose because it shows us just how meticulous, and into detail and specific your God is. I hope you're reading it with me. I hope you weren't just reading it with me, but you was actually reading it with me because it showed us that God is into fashion. He said, I'm going to anoint them to be able to make wardrobes. He's into artistic designs and interior decorations. God's into it. He cares about everything. He's into the specifics, the dimensions, the materials. It all matters. Here's why it all matters. You ready? It all matters because it's all for purpose. Say that with me. It's for purpose. I need some cash. Oh, Mark, you got some cash? I need some cash. He said, yeah, you ain't got no money. <laughs> That's a lot of cash. Fifties on fifties on. Where you going? <laughs> no, our from plate didn't come in front of you today? <laughs> Just going to hold on to this, huh? I think the Lord need to use this. Who want a gift? Who, who need a gift? I want to make an investment. Come on, curse bass, everybody. That's a good man right here. Got on his jersey. He participated in Jordan Sunday. It's just for you, man. Bless you, man. Bless you. Bless you. I like him. Now, Ashley, don't get comfortable. I'm going to need you to give that back to me. I'm sorry. The reason I need you to give this back to me is because I said it was an investment. And when I handed it to you, you just said, thank you. But if you understood that the gift was actually an investment, you would have turned around and asked me, how do I want you to use it? And many of us are in church today sitting on gifts. That was an investment that God expects a return on. This is why he says in his Bible, no word can return to him void. You are an investment. Ooh, say that with me. I am an investment. When God decided to choose and to use you, it was for a purpose, for a purpose. And the purpose is found here in Exodus 31, and it hadn't changed. I'm going to hold on to this. God bless you. The purpose hadn't changed. The purpose is to build his house. God's so specific, hear me, in who he calls, how he calls them, what he invests in them, because the purpose is to build a space for sacrifice. And that same purpose exists today. Ladies and gentlemen, it's never about our hands. It's about our hearts because God only enables us to build up for the intended purpose of laying something down. Are you with me? Ask somebody, what are you laying down? If you're creating and if you're building without future sacrifice in mind, you're building idols, not altars. God does not anoint you to build for you. God does not anoint you to create for you. It's for his house. And when I say his house, let me give some clarity. I'm not talking about these four walls. I'm talking about his kingdom. Are you building for your namesake or his namesake? There's no scripture that charges us to make our own name great. He told Abraham, I'll make your name great. Ooh, and we're in a day where everybody's branding. Everybody want a name for themselves. And we're at, we got in order to be depressed because people don't notice us. Here's a question. I want you to wrestle with this question all week long. This is how you know if you're building it for God. You ready? Very practically. Ask yourself this question. Can God stay here comfortably? I want you all to check out my website. Can God stay on that website comfortably? I got a new podcast. Can God stay in it comfortably? I got a wedding reception. Can God attend it? I got a bachelor party. Can God attend it? I'm going on a weekend getaway. Can God come with you? Or did you leave him at home with the kids so you can go and be young again? Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Can God stay here comfortably? Because when God chews you and fills you, he does it so that you could create altars, not idols. I hope you saw it with me in Exodus 31. Three, watch this. The Bible says, it's so powerful. 
So he chose them just like I did my friend Chris. Chose, select. He says, I chose them. See, I have chosen them. Then he says, I have filled him with the spirit of God. He says, yo, hey, Moses, I filled him with my spirit. Past tense. I filled him with my spirit already. I filled him with wisdom. I filled him with understanding. I filled him with knowledge. And I filled him with skills. I was reading this this week. And I practice what I preach. I know that I can't just read the Bible. Y'all smart. I'm paying for everybody lunch today. Chick-fil-A. Go there today. <laughs> Order number one. And tell them I sent you. I filled them with my spirit. I filled them with wisdom. I filled them with understanding. I filled them with knowledge. And then with skills. The order matters. Look, the last thing he named, you gotta, you gotta, if you got glasses, you probably can't see it. The very bottom, skills. I want you to memorize this, this acronym, SWOX. That's how I memorize stuff when I preach. SWOX, spirit, wisdom, understanding. Now, ah, SWOX, knowledge and skills. Ain't it funny? That the last thing he mentioned is skills, and yet it's the number one thing that we promote. Oh, don't do it, Travis. We know everything about your skills on your Instagram page. Because, you know, you change them every season. In the fall, you do nails. In the winter, you make wigs. In the summer, you model, and in the spring, you start a podcast. You got so many skills, and we all know your skills, but the question is not about your skills. The question is, can we tell that you're full of the Spirit of God? I'm not knocking your hustle. I'm just saying, what's being promoted more, him or you? Write this, I need the Spirit of God. I need the spirit of God as a deer pants for water. My soul thirsts and longs after I need the spirit of God. David said, hey, fam, I know I messed up. You can take anything. Please don't take your spirit. Don't take your presence. I need more than I need oxygen, more than I need collard greens, more than I need my kids, more than I need my ibuprofen. I need the spirit of God. It is my nourishment. His spirit is the thing that motivates me. His spirit is the thing that gets me out of my low place. His spirit is the thing that gives me purpose gives me reason to live I need the Spirit of God and it is primary it's first and foremost you ready I know you have a spirit not by how well you speak in tongues that's for my Pentecostals the evidence of speaking in tongues Terry oh, do, 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 do. Are you so, I ain't knocking. That's where I come from. I'm spirit filled. I believe in praying in the spirit. I'm all, I'm with all of that. But what good is praying in tongues when you, when you, when you, when you, when you gossip with your native tongue? You sound like heaven when you're praying in tongues, or you sound like hell when you're talking English. The proof of the Spirit is the fruit of the Spirit. I know He's in you, but the fruit that is on display out of you. Fruit, singular. Fruit, not fruits of the Spirit. Because if it's fruits of the Spirit, that means I can select which one I want to use today. But they're all ingredients for one fruit. So that means, come on, here we go. If you got love, but no self-control, because your love caused you to drop it like it. <laughs> if you got peace, I got my peace. But you don't have kindness. I have to ask, are you full of his spirit? I need the spirit of God. Not only that, I need the wisdom of God. That's the order. Spirit of God. Wisdom of God. He said, I filled him. Skills, we'll get there. I ain't worried about that. I, I'm a, I gave him my spirit and I gave him my wisdom. You need wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to discern. Wrote in Proverbs 4 7, wisdom is the principal thing. 
Therefore, get wisdom. And all I get and get understanding. Come on, tell somebody, you got to get wisdom. There's a difference, and I love how you split these up because there's a difference. It means I could be knowledgeable and lack wisdom at the same time. Here we go, I'm about to offend you. Age does not make you wise. You can have gray hair, no teeth, and still be a fool. Come on, I'm not trying to offend you. I'm just saying, I know some. Because wisdom is applied knowledge. You ready? Knowledge is I know what to do. Understanding is I understand how to do it. Wisdom is I know when and where to do it. I need God's wisdom. And God is the source of all wisdom. He's the source of all creativity. And through the years, ladies and gentlemen, we've given him many attributes that are well-deserved. We've called him uh, a provider. We've called him protector. We've called him sustainer. We've called him healer. But today, I want to bring emphasis and awareness to an attribute that we do not recognize enough. God is the creative genius. He is not bland. He is not boring. He is bold in his, in his expressions. This guy that we're talking about He's a God who painted the sky. He's a God who formed the mountains. He got down and formed mankind out of the dust. Man, he's a potter. This God is very artistic. He's so artistic, he created stars and galaxies and planets and mosquitoes. How artistic are you to create a hippopotamus and a crab so I can have crab legs? That God is a genius. The Bible says in Genesis 1, this is powerful, Genesis 1, 1, most of us know this verse. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created. For those of you who know, and for those who don't know, which is the reason we're doing this series, the first five books of the Bible known as Pentateuch was written by a man named Moses. He's a prophet, right? So God gives him a revelation of what happened in creativity. And this is the first thing, hear me, that God tells him to write. Before they find out anything about me. Let them know, in the beginning, God, meaning I was there before anything else was created because I created everything. He says, before you tell them anything about me, write this down. In the beginning, God created. I love this because he is the ultimate creative genius. I got a few verses for you I want you to get. John 1, 3. It says, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Colossians 1, 16. For in him all things were created. Things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and, this is the key, for him. Can I give you some good news? The devil is and always has been limited. He's not without power. He's just limited. He's not without resources. He's just limited. He's not without strategy. Say it with me. He's just limited. He is a limited devil. I like to call him that. You a limited devil. Here, get your limited. You a limited devil. I'm going to tell you why he's limited. He's limited because there's something he's never been able to do. He cannot create. There is no scripture in your Bible. I hope you brought your Bible. There's no scripture in your Bible that gives him the credit for being able to create, which tells me, ladies and gentlemen, all he can do is corrupt. All he can do is pervert something that God created for himself. The enemy, he can't even give life. That's why I, I, I'm all for you keeping the baby that God allows you to get pregnant with because the devil can't give life. That's above his pay grade. He can't give life. He can imitate, he can manipulate, but he can't create. He can imitate, manipulate, but he can't create. He can, he can imitate. And he's so aware of his limitation. Watch this. So he goes about like a roaring lion. He can't even create a lion. So he got a fake the phone can go about like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. Seeking whom he may destroy and distract away from your God-given purpose. All right, you ready for this? Five minutes and 30 seconds. Jesus, how am I going to do this? I'm going to go fast. Everyone who's never been created. (laughs) Everyone who has ever been created has been tempted by the devil to take a shortcut to try to find a way out, to get instant gratification. Jesus, yo Jesus, he was tempted by the devil. 
Adam was tempted by the devil. Man. David was tempted by the devil. But I need you to catch this. If you don't hear nothing else I'm going to say today, and I got a few more things to say. After David fell in sin, I recognize in the word that he never gave credit to the devil for his sin. Because to give credit to the devil would mean that he is trying to acknowledge the fact, hear me, that the devil created Bathsheba, he didn't, or that the devil created his wandering eye. No, 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 David, you chose to look at that. I'm not saying the devil didn't tempt you, but you tried it. I'm not saying that the devil didn't pervert it, but you pursued it. And I love this because David has true repentance. And if you don't have true repentance and recognize you're wrong, hear me very clearly. If you just recognize the enemy over and over, then you will not recognize the fact that all he can do is exploit what's already in you. And if you continue to make excuses about it and cover it up instead of expose it, then it can't be cast out. So David, David looks at the only creator, you know the scripture, in Psalms 51, verse 7. He says, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you, that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Here we go. He looks to his creator and says, hey, only you can do this. Create in me a clean heart. And renewing me a right spirit. There's only one who has the ability to create. This is very important, ladies and gentlemen. Because if the devil can't create, that means the devil can't make anything. I want to extract from your vocabulary this phrase. The devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. No, 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 no. Since the devil didn't make you, he can't make you do anything. The, oh, this is heavy. The devil can tempt me, but he can't make me. Come on, holler at me. Holler at me. He can't make me do anything. He can't make me do anything. And so I got to turn my eyes off of what the devil did and look at God in my situation and how he creatively makes all things work together for my good. And this is what happens with Joseph in chapter 50 of Genesis. This is what happened with Joseph. Joseph has this, uh, this come to Jesus moment this re where, where his revelation now turns into manifestation. I love this moment. And Joseph meets with his brothers and his brothers are trying to take credit for what happened in Joseph's life. They're trying to take it. They're like, hey, man, we saw it. And Joseph's like, no, 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 no. He said in verse 20, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. Can I have five more minutes? I got to show this to you. I got to show this to you. Because I'm the worst person to watch movies with for multiple reasons. One, because I'm scared of everything. It don't matter what it is. And because I think everything demonic. I'm from that school. Y'all knew school, but I think everything. Jannar came to my house. He wanted to watch some little Indian movie that came out. Every, what's the name of that? Flower of the Moon, Full Moon, something. That sound weird. And we was watching. He said, this is an amazing movie. We was watching it. And the, the Indian people, God bless their hearts, were doing all kind of woo -loo -loo -loo. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> That little funeral, they was like, nah, 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 nah. Oh, wait a minute. I believe in portals. I ain't letting whatever that spirit is, the voodoo happen. I'm horrible with movies. I'm horrible with movies. And the thing that I hate the most about movies is the opening credits. How does it feel like it'd be wasting my time? I don't care who produced. I don't care who directed. I, if I'm at home, anybody else do that? I fast forward by all that. I just want to get, my heart be like, just play it. No, baby, this is five minutes of my life. Then I have to rewind. I bet I think we missed something. <laughs> but I had this thought. I had this thought. I had this thought. I bet the people who enjoy it the most are the actual producers and directors. Because they, they deserve the credit for what they did. So if you allow me just for 30 seconds, I'd like to show you a movie premiere. Baby, would you be my date? <laughs> Dress me up. This is a movie I produce, y'all. We're going to the movie premiere. Take your pictures. He said, I ain't take you somewhere in a while. I just brought you on a date today. I don't, 
I don't want to hear about it no more. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Oh yeah, this is my movie, y'all. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait now. My wife is up here eating this popcorn. Girl, we is in a demonstration. I had this thought. Maybe that's what it feels like for heaven to watch your life. And the beauty of God's goodness is being blocked by the credit you keep giving to other things because whatever hear me you give credit to you give power to Uh I'm not saying it didn't happen to you I'm saying even what happened to you was supposed to be light and momentary according to Paul but you continue to resuscitate it when you give it more credit Mm. and if you're not careful your creative flow will be blocked by the credits that are filling up the screen on your life. What are you putting on display? And this is what I love about Joseph. He refused to give credit to the devil. He refused to give credit to Potiphar's wife at the end of Genesis. He refused to give credit even to his brother. But he said, what you you meant for evil, God intended for my good. And watch what happens. The Bible, I'm almost done. The Bible says now his family comes in to avoid a famine. They come into Egypt 70 deep. God makes an investment in Egypt, 70 people. and, and, And that's an investment. That's an investment. And the return on this investment is two million people. And the Bible begins in Exodus by saying, as they were oppressed, they multiplied and grew. Can I tell you something? Pressure is your friend. God's been multiplying and growing you. And I love this about the scripture because it shows me something, ladies and gentlemen. It shows me the intentionality of my God. But this is what you got to understand. Exodus would never happen if Joseph messes up on who gets the credit. Because sitting at the table with him was 11 of his brothers. One of them was Levi. And if he looked at him and said, Levi, I remember what you did. You a dead man. Because Moses was a Levite. If you kill Levi, you kill Moses. Judah, can't believe you did this to me, dog. I'm going to have to kill you. Because Jesus is from the tribe of Judah. If you kill Judah, Joseph, you kill Jesus. And this is why it matters, ladies and gentlemen, who you give credit to, because legacy is on the line. I'm done with this. This is my favorite part of all of it. Jesus, Jesus just, he's amazing, man. And he shows out all through Exodus. God just puts his power on display. A bunch of what I like to call creative miracles. Ten plagues, creative miracles. Then he splits the Red Sea in half, and the Bible says the Israelites walked through on dry, get, dry land. The highway for the Israelites is a graveyard for the enemy. I'm going to set you up for a praise. You ready? Whenever God brings you out, he's always setting you free and setting a trap for the devil at the same time. Which tells me this. Every creative miracle comes with two reasons of praise. One, I made it out. Two, the devil lost again. I need 30 people who know that your God can make a creative miracle happen in your life. Come on, I'm the product of a creative miracle. If you knew how nasty I was, if you knew how low I was, if you knew how lost I was, you'd know that God had to get creative in rescuing me. I'm the product of a creative miracle. The product of a creative miracle. I was driving my Jeep the other day. Hey, yo, it's dark in here. Can we brighten up just a little bit? We better roll out. It's, it's movie theater dark in here. Y'all can stand with me. Yeah, that'll make me wrap up. I was driving my Jeep the other day, and uh, the sound went out. 
It made me upset because I was trying to listen to a podcast. Listen to one of my favorite preachers. And the sound just went out. And I was like, what happened to the sound? So as a former mechanic, I started disrobing myself of majesty. Pulled my sleeves back. And I called a mechanic and I said, hey man. I said, hey man, the sound went out of my car. He said, cool, I'll take it to the shop. Ladies and gentlemen, he took it to the shop to find out the sound went out because the fuse blew. Is that what it's called? Fuse blow? The fuse blew. The fuse blew because there were wires, speaker wires in my car that were placed in the wrong spot. And he sent me this picture. Look at this picture. This is one of the speaker wires. He said there were several of them that were melting that they had to take out and replace. If the fuse didn't blow, he said, he said, I'm not guessing when I tell you this, PT. Your truck could have and should have caught on fire. He says, I know because I had a truck to catch on fire from the same thing. I said, wait a minute. That'll preach. So you mean to tell me, God, stop the sound that I thought I needed. You mean to tell me, God ended the season that I thought I needed. You mean to tell me that God closed the door that I thought I needed. You meant to tell me that God put a pause on the relationship that I thought was for me. You meant to tell me that God ended one thing to preserve me. And this is what Exodus is all about. God is ending what you think you need in order to bring you to a more fulfilling place. Now I need you to give your creative God a praise like he's the only one who's worthy. He's the only one who's worthy. He's the only one who's worthy. Last revelation and we're done. I was reading this and I started connecting some dots and I had to look into this. And I said, wait a minute. Some of these names look familiar. And there's a story in Exodus 17 about Jehovah Nissi. And whenever God gives you a name, it comes with a testimony. You only know Jehovah Jireh when you have a testimony of needing a provision. You only know Rafa, Jehovah Rafa, through a testimony of needing a healer. So here's how he exposed himself as Jehovah Nisi, which means my better. What happens is there's a battle that's happening and the Amalekites come and they're fighting against Moses and the Israelites. And the Bible says as long as Moses' hands are raised, that the Israelites are winning. Joshua and the army is winning. But whenever he gets tired and lowers his hands, they start losing. So they bring him a stone to sit on. And man, the dude's getting tired. Have you ever just got tired? You felt like you were lifting up the whole family. You felt like you were lifting up the whole business by yourself. You felt like all the weight was on your shoulders. This is why you got to sign up and serve and get connected to Forest City. Because when your arms get weak, God will surround you with other people that can help lift up your arms and give you strength. And this is why when I was reading this, I thought about this. I said maybe they were winning the war because this is a posture of worship. When we ask you to lift your hands, it's not for exercise. It's saying, hey, the battle is yours, God. This is a sign of surrender. It says, I'm taking my hands off. And when I take my hands off it, God, you can put your hands on it. And as long as his hands were lifted, they were winning the war. And the Bible says he got tired. They brought him a stone. He sat down on it. And he kept, man, it was all day. All day, his arms were getting weak. This is so interesting. The Bible says that Aaron, his brother, was like, hey, dog, we need to help them. This is Exodus 17. We need to help him. So they come, Aaron lifts up one arm, and then he gets another friend named Her. They come and lift up the other arm. Her was just being a good guy, and Aaron would go on to be famous, and all his sons would be of the Levitical order. They would be the priests uh, that work in the temple. Aaron's a really big deal. He's one of the spokesmen for God. He's a big deal. You don't hear a whole lot about Her after this. You know he comes from the tribe of Judah, so he's a praiser. He knows how to praise. But I hope y'all read what I read. The Bible says in Exodus 31, verse 2, See, I have chosen Bezalel, my investment, son of Uri, the son of Hur, from the tribe of Judah. It is widely believed that this Hur is the grandfather of Bezalel. So this man who God invests and imparts his spirit, all swooks, his wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and skills, is the grandson possibly of her? 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is powerful and it changed the whole game because it tells me that when her assistant Moses, it was a legacy investment. When I worship, I'm not just worshiping the God of Travis. As I worship, I'm making an investment for my grandkids who ain't even here yet. Did you hear what I just said? And this is why the devil wants you to play Russia roulette with your destiny because he knows legacy is on the line but I wish I had a hundred people that would stand and say no 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 as for me and my house we will serve the Lord we will serve the Lord we will serve the Lord God's not looking just for creative minds God's not just looking for creative hands but God's looking for broken spirit and contrite hearts that would say God you be creative creating me a clean heart and renewing me all right, Spirit, would you for a moment lift your hands and worship to let Jehovah Nisi fight for you and let your creative God make a way for your legacy. It's one of the most powerful things about how I grew up. Many of you know my testimony. I lost my dad when I was five years old. Life is a little different when you're five-year-old standing at a graveside. So I understand how fragile life is. I don't play with life. But man, I, I remember growing up, my dad was 28 when he died. My mom was 29 at the time. And um, I remember growing up, man, and my mom, I remember sometimes walking down the steps and seeing my mom cry. But it, when my mind go back, see, I don't, I don't give the credit to the devil. I give the credit to the goodness of God. And when my mind goes back, I remember her crying. But it's not that she was crying. Hear me. I remember what she was saying. And she wasn't saying, God, I can't believe you did this to me. God, I'm walking away. God, I'll... And that's cool if that's the moment that you're in. But those words matter, especially to your kids. But my mom would say stuff like, I need you, God. If you don't come and help me with these kids, I'm not going to make it. God, I'm calling on you. She's one of those old school prayer warriors, you know. And they, they pray with a tune. Now, Lord, I'm calling on you. Come see about me. That's why I, I grew up in that environment. So it's no wonder I'm walking in a call. Because I watched her trust God and worship in a battle that looked like she was losing. What's the story that's going to be written about you? When it's all said and done, how will your kids talk about you to their kids? How will you, even if you don't have kids, how would your nieces or nephews, how, how will the next generation remember you? Would they remember you as a person of faith? Man, they went through a lot, but I, I, I don't want to talk about the trauma. I remember how they trusted God. I remember, man, I remember some Sundays when we didn't even know what we were going to eat, but my mom said, we're going to the house of God. That's that's the story that I want to be told. Something happened um, a, a couple years ago. Uh, my wife, we rarely argue at all, but this day, I, just, I, I got really upset and I kind of lost my cool. And I'm, like, I'm sick of it. She was like, wait a minute. I'm sick of it. I just had one of my incredible Hulk moments because I'm human. And uh, never forget this. My middle son started crying. He's the one most in touch with his emotions. He was standing there. I was like, Champ, I'm so sorry. He was like, yeah, that mommy. <laughs> and I felt so bad, man. I had to go and we saw and I apologized to her and we got it right. And that later that night we were talking and she said, you know what amazed me about today? She's so spiritual. She said, you don't know what <laughs> God gave me permission to love you in spite of your craziness. And I just, <laughs> she said, you know what amazed me about today? I said, what? She said, I thought she was going to bring up what I, what I did. She said, no, 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 no. We cool, we cool, we cool. She said, how cool is it that your sons are so not used to dysfunction that they've never heard you raise your voice at me? How cool is that? I said, you're right. I am a good man. I am, <laughs> I am somebody. I almost forgot. I'm, I am P.T. 
Hey, what's the story that's going to be told of you? Because they're going to remember. Man, I want to sow seeds of faith. I want to sow seeds, here we go, of faithfulness. I'm not saying you're going to get it perfect. But I'm saying, man, let's invest in this generation and show them how to seek the face of God. Come on, just for one more moment, would you lift your hands? God, we give you praise, we give you worship. Allow this to be our posture, not just in this building, but as you anoint us to build your kingdom. Let us be found worshiping. Let us be found faithful. Encourage our hearts. Give us strength, give us peace. So that we can leave a lasting legacy. For the Bezalel to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, if you love them, clap your hands, give them praise. All right. We got Jordan Sunday. I want to do two things. My wife is coming up here. I want to do two things and we're all going to leave together. Please, if you could just give me literally 60 seconds. The first thing I want to do, if you're in this room, you're far from the Jesus that we've been celebrating, but something happened in your heart today. You say, you know what? I want to get connected to God. I want to give him a heart for the first time, for the first time in a long time. Last service, dozens of hands are going to go up. The same thing is about to happen now. I'm counting to three. And if you're far from the Jesus we've been celebrating, I want you to receive him. Today, this has been a power pack service, and I pray something has happened in your heart. You ready? One, I need a savior. Two, I need him to create in me a clean heart. Three, lift your hands like your life depends on it. I want Jesus. I want Jesus. I see you. I see you. I see you in the back. I see you over here. We got any hands over here? Come on. I want Jesus. I want Jesus. Hey, if there's a hand lifted around you, would you put a hand on their shoulder? We're going to pray together before we leave. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus. I give you my heart. I give you my mind. All that I am belongs to you completely. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for getting up so I don't have to stay down. I receive you today as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give them a praise. Come on, give them a good praise. Hey family, thank you for checking out this week's message. I pray something was said or done that can inspire you to live a transformed life in Jesus Christ. I believe that the future is waiting on you and you're about to move into it. So make sure you like and subscribe right now to the YouTube page so you can check out all the messages every week right here. Love you.